Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Jonas, so much for that beautiful music, that prelude. And now our worship leader, Mindy Sterner, is coming up to the communion table and is going to share the call to worship with us. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. Let us find the freedom of worshiping the God who shows us the ways of goodness and happiness. You may be seated. So I would like you to remember 
what you were doing 50 years ago. Now, some of you may say, I wasn't even born 50 years ago. What are you talking about 50 years ago? Uh, but some of you were, and some of you remember that you were here in church joining the congregation. And I know that probably 50 years ago, uh, Betty Trump had taken her book when you joined and had some pages ahead that said 2021, 2022, and she wrote your name because that's when you would have been a 50 year member, right, Betty? Yeah, she has this organized, which is good because now we can celebrate the fact that some of you have been 50 members all that time. Um, so because of COVID and us not meeting in church and not gathering, but being online on the telephone conference call and on Zoom, during the pandemic, we weren't able to celebrate for a couple of years, but now we have the opportunity to do so. So uh, I would like to read your names as printed up on the slide there. And if you could stand on either side of the communion table and just sort yourself out where you're comfortable, that would be fine. I'm gonna call your name and uh, please come down at that time. So from the year 2020, Dale R. Beard, Durrett M. Garrett. Come on down, Garrett, Durrett. Gloria Henry. You know her, yeah. Brian T. Teddy Miller. Gerald L. Shu Sr. Come on down, Gerald. It's good, good you've got an assistant up there to run the soundboard, right? That's right. Donna M. Shu. Did you two join at the same time then? Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> did, did you remember her from back then? No, not really. <laughs> from 2021. Karen S. Magalski, and Karen will be here next week to receive her award. Edward W. Miller. Lori A. Miller. Randy J. Rohrbaugh. I think Randy and Lorelei are on vacation this week. Galen L. Shu. And Thomas J. Strasbaugh. And Betty J. Woodring. Very good. Now, if you know any of the people that were on the list and they didn't show up and you want to pick up their award, you can do that. Or we'll just, we'll just catch them next time they're here. So let us say a prayer for these people. Dear Lord, as we give these medals, these memories of people members for 50 years. We thank you, Lord, for being with them during all that time. When they were young, helping them to have the ideals and the sense of goodness and the love of you to join the church. And for all that time, to keeping their membership here, to coming to church, to being part of our worship and supporting our faith. We ask that you bless them and keep them in your care. And if they're here in another 50 years, we'll have a chance to celebrate them then as well. And what a blessing that will be. Thank you, Lord, for these good folks and bless them. Here we go. You are, sir. You are direct. There you are. Let us have an applaud for their good efforts and their dedication. Thank you so much and God bless you and, and God bless your faith as well.
Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, it is the fall of the year. And what a beautiful time it is with leaves changing and the sky so, so crystal blue with the temperature just right. Sometimes we're outside and there's a little chill, but the, the warmth of the sun heats us up. And sometimes when we've been in the sun too long and there's a little breeze and cools us down. And to see all the profusion of different colors of fall is just magnificent. We sometimes have contradictory feelings in fall. On the one hand, we might feel, oh, the summer heat is ending. The harvest is here. See all the good things there are around us that we have. And on the other hand, we might think the winter is coming. It's going to be snowy and cold and icy and oh, I don't wanna go through that again. But yet Lord, we know that you are with us in every season. You're with us in those seasons of life when we have to let go of things. You're with us in those seasons of life when we need to adapt to some new tomorrow, some new adventure. Sometimes we do confess, Lord, that we get stuck in the past and we even refuse to admit that the new has come, the change is here because we just don't want to do it. And other times, Lord, you, you just give us such faith and courage that we move on and we change for something new and something good. Dear Lord, we do confess that at times we get very caught up in ourselves. We worry how we will appear to others. We want to impress other people. We want to be the big deal. We want to be the center of attention. When Lord, it is so good that we can serve you and care about others and lift them up and help them in their needs. For as we reach out and care, we know at the same time you take care of us. And as we put aside our thoughts for ourselves, you are providing for our needs. And we are so grateful. Dear Lord, as we sometimes feel very insecure about what the future will bring, what will happen when we die, what will happen as we face new tomorrows. Help us to know that you're gonna be there in that new tomorrow before we are. You will have it all mapped out and you will have a secure place for us to be. Help us Lord, as we think about the crop walk next week and helping those in need who are hungry, both at here and other places, that you give us ways of helping others in caring. You let us forget about ourselves and love others. And we are so grateful for that. Bless us, Lord, we pray. Keep us in your caring and give us your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. And now Mindy Sterner is back to share the first part of our prayer list. It's a long prayer list, but there's a lot of people who not only need our prayers, but so appreciate the fact that you pray for them. Please join me in prayer. Thelma Blocker, Reverend Phyllis Baum, Kennedy Bear Jr., Joe Black, Georgia B., Larry Thomas, Janet Conley, Chris Elliott, Gwyneth and Julia Eiler, Joan and John Fabula, John, Jan Fry, Steph Fry, John Harris, Gloria Henry, Paul Hughes Jr., Gardy Lawrence, Jane Miller, Jane Nace, Jeanette and Dean Orball, Greg and Sandra Puderball, Jean Sterner, Mike Sterner, Elaine Stow, Bill W. and family, Jim Wardrop, Phyllis Werner, and we're gonna give praise for improvement of Esther Mangus, family and friends of Dean L. Kramer, Lydia Eiler, Linda Glass, Jim Gauker, Marguerite Heidler, George Kre or Gregory Krebs, Mike Lehman, George Rankin Sr.
And let us share together the prayer the Lord has taught us as we say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Your offerings can be mailed to Cindy Forbes at 5123 Sinsheim School Road, Spring Grove, PA, 17362. Sunday school offerings can be sent to Neil Rohrball at 800 Mangus Mills Road, Spring Grove, PA, 17362. Church envelopes and offering plates for both Sunday school and church are, in, are at the back of the sanctuary. in the world. There are some folks who don't have any faith and others who have just material needs and some are just alone and need the company and caring of others. We thank you that we can give our gifts to touch the lives of others, to bring healing, to bring encouragement and love. Bless the gifts we bring, Lord. Thank you for encouraging us and moving us to be generous for this itself is such a blessing. You, we ask your blessing upon the blessings you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
And now will the children please come forward for today's, this morning's, this worship services, children's story. Very good. I'll be back. You'll be right back. Okay. Oh, good morning. Hi. How are you? What's your name, miss? Maggie. Hi, Maggie. What's your name, sir? Elijah. Elijah, hi. What's your name? Kesha. And what's your name, sir? Ben. Very good. Thank you. So this morning, we're going to do a little something, and I would like you to pay attention to the screen, and we are going to have a story from our friends at Free Bible Images, okay? They give us these, these pictures. It's very handy. So anyway, this is a story about a man who was paralyzed. Do you know what that means? I think it means that you, like, you can't move. That's right. That's right. He can't walk, and sometimes people are paraplegic. They can't uh, walk, they can't move their legs, and sometimes they're uh, quadriplegic, they can't move their legs or their hands. Did you know that? Oh, thank you. What's that? Oh, is that a unicorn? Is that a unicorn? No, no, it's it's an angel, right? No. No? That's really cute. Yeah. It's actually a fairy. It's a fairy. Thank you. I need I need to be straightened out on these things because I don't I don't have young children anymore. Yes. My name is Papa. What's the what's her name? Pop up. Pop up. Yeah, neat. Oh, purple. Yes, that's neat. Can you see the screen up there? See it? We're gonna hear a story about a man who couldn't walk. Anyway, one day Jesus was at his home in a place called Capernaum, and you know what happened? Everybody wanted to see Jesus. The the crowds came and look look his house. It's all filled up with people, right? I mean, how do you get in if everybody's there, right? And there was some friends who had a man. There was this, oh, you'll put it together. I have very, great confidence in you. Anyway, so where was I? What's, what do you see in the picture, Maggie? It just looks like these guys are walking into a house. Yeah, they're trying to walk into a house, but see, they have a man who, who's on a stretcher. Do you see that? See the guy on a stretcher? Because ah. he, he can't walk. He's the guy who can't walk, right? And uh, so how are they going to get into the house if there's no room? Do you have any idea? They're going to jump on the roof. You, th you think they're going to jump on the roof? Yeah. Well, you know what? You're right. There they are up on the roof. They figured they can't get into the house, right? So they're going to they're gonna dig a hole in the roof. Now, how would you feel if somebody dug a hole in your roof? Oh. That's right. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't you be annoyed? <gasps> I mean, you know, you're downstairs. And all this junk is falling down because they're they're digging into the roof. You know, that wouldn't be cool, would it? So anyway, so what they do is they dig a hole in the roof. And look at they're lowering this man on his stretcher down and, and see Jesus is over there. See Jesus in the red? That's Jesus. And you know what he's not saying? You got some nerve cutting in my roof and plaster and dust and mud everywhere. He's not saying that, is he? No. He's happy. You know why he's happy? Any idea? Because these friends had enough faith in Jesus that, that they could cut a hole. You got your princess crown. That's so cool. 
yeah, they could cut a hole in his roof and he wouldn't get upset because they just had faith in him. And the man on the stretcher, you see him there. See, he, he might look a little worried, but Jesus is smiling at him because he wants to help him. So anyway, in those days, people thought that if you were sick, you had done something really bad and God was out to get you. Why do you think that? If you've ever been really sick, sometimes you feel like you're being punished. I was sick before. You've been sick before, so you know. But God, God doesn't punish you just by being sick. That God isn't into that. Okay. But anyway, Jesus said to the man, you know what he said? Your sins are forgiven. Wow, isn't that neat? He said, you're okay. And some people see these two guys over there. They're not sure they like that. Who is Jesus to be going to forgiving sins, you know? Only God can do that, they said. And Jesus said to them, okay, so what would be easier for, do, for me to do to say to the man, your sins are forgiven, or take your mat and get up and walk. Take your stretcher and get up and walk. Do you think it would be a little harder for Jesus to make this man who was paralyzed to be able to walk again? Well, you know what he does? He says, your sins are forgiven. Take up your mat and walk. And the man looks pretty happy because he trusts him. And there he is. There he is carrying the stretcher. You see him the, over there carrying the stretcher over there? Isn't that cool? Yeah. And the men are saying, we've never seen anything like this before. He must be really God's man, right? Yeah. So what did you learn from that story? Hmm? Did you learn? What do you think? Any idea? Do you suppose Jesus can do things that people don't think he can? Do you think Jesus can help people who are sick? When, yeah. And sometimes people think that they know exactly what God is like. <laughs> you put a crown on my microphone. Yes. Sometimes they'll think that people know exactly what God is like and Jesus shows them a better way. Well, thank you so much for being here for the children's story. I appreciate it. And you can go back and sit with your parents again. Thank you so much. All right, the scriptures come from Proverbs 11, verse 25. Be generous and you will be prosperous. Help others and you will be helped. The second scripture comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 37 through 38. Do not judge others and God will not judge you. Do not condemn others and God will not condemn you. Forgive others and God will forgive you. Give to others and God will give to you. Indeed, you will receive a full measure, a generous helping poured into your hands, all that you can hold. The measure you use for others is the one that God will use for you. Once upon a time, there was a woman who worked for a company and she was a very kind person. People would come to her and she would listen to them with such compassion, not ready to judge, not ready to give them quick answers, but really listen to where they were. More than that, she would ask them questions in a way to encourage them to move forward if they got stuck. So who do you think could help you with this? What do you think You've, you've been in this situation before. What did you do then? She would move them ahead in very kind ways. And more than that, she had such a way of reframing their reality. When they were seeing only gloom and doom and storm skies all about, she would show them where the sun was breaking through, how they had such potential and possibility. Well, not only did this woman do a kind job with the people who worked with her, but she was really good at her job. And so she got promoted to be a manager and things really began to change. First of all, there were people who were jealous. Why did they promote her instead of me? I, I do a better job than anybody. And, and so they weren't happy. Then there were other people 
who, since she was the boss, she wanted them, she wanted the, the woman to get their will done. You know, I work so hard in this company and that person over there is sitting on their backside all the time. You go tell her to start working like she should. And the woman went do that. And so they got angry. And then what would happen is sometimes people just didn't like that somebody was the boss and they didn't like her. And she said, why can't people get along? Why can't people be easier to deal with? Or take this 12 year old girl, her mother and her two aunts were planning a 35th wedding anniversary for the grandparents. And the 12 year old girl was so excited about it. She loved her grandparents and she said, mom, can I help you and your sisters plan this event for our, my grandparents? And her mother said, sure. So they had a couple of meetings. And after the couple of meetings with the aunts and her mom, the 12 year old girl said, you know, you and your sisters don't get along that well. I mean, sometimes I hear one saying, well, I'm older than you and I know better, or mom always loved me best, so I should be the one to do all the planning, or I'm just smarter than the rest of you and I, I should do the planning, and you're fighting all the time. Mom, you wouldn't take that from my eight-year-old brother and I, who am 12, so why can't you three get along? What's the deal? And I'm sure all of us have known people who are arrogant, think they know better than everyone else and tend to look down on other people. And you might've said, why can't people get along? Now, if you felt this way, the apostle Paul certainly knows how you felt because he had those same problems. You remember, Paul was that apostle of Jesus who after Jesus' death and resurrection, he would go to different cities and he would start new churches and then after he was there a while, he would move on to the next city and start another church. But following Paul were always letters from those past churches in which they would write to him and tell them, tell Paul all their troubles. And usually it was about people not getting along. For example, in the church at Corinth, there was Paul who had been the leader of the church and started it. And after him came a disciple named uh, Apollos. And there were people in the church who were arguing about, well, whose person are we? Who's our leader? Is it Paul or is it this other guy named Apollos? And Paul just rolled his eyes, you can imagine, thinking. And he decided he needed to write them a letter. And he wrote them a letter all about the fact that they were very worldly people. And he said, as a matter of fact, my friends, when you first started in the faith, I could not talk to you as I talk to people who have the spirit of Christ. I had to talk to you as if you belong to the world, as children of this world in the Christian faith. I had to feed you milk, not solid food, because you were not ready for it. And even now, you are not ready for it because you still live as people of the world live, where there is jealousy among you and you quarrel with another, one another, doesn't that prove that you belong to this world living by its standards? When one of you says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, aren't you acting like worldly people? After all, who is Apollos and who is Paul? We are simply God's servants by whom you were led to believe. Each one of us does the work which Lord gave him to do. I planted the seed, Apollos watered the plant, but it was God who made the plant to grow. The one who plants and the one who waters really doesn't matter. It is God who matters because he makes the plant grow. There is no difference between the one who plants and the one who waters. God will reward each one according to the work he has done. For we are partners together for God and you are God's field. You are also God's building. Now, isn't that fascinating what Paul said? He said, 
They're acting like worldly people. What does he mean by that? Well, in the ancient Roman Empire, status and being the big deal was everything. Only a few people had power and money and control. And all the rest of the people, the other 99%, were pretty much everyday people trying to scrape by as much as they could. So what people would do is they would find themselves a patron, someone who was a big deal, the big kahuna, the big swayer, and the big mover, and they would try to attach themselves to that person. And the big kahuna, the big deal, would like people who were their clients so that they could have influence and power because they would have a whole team to do their dirty work, all right? So that's what's happening in Corinth. The members of the church are thinking that Paul and Apollos are the big deal. They're the patrons. They're the high and mighty. We're going to attach themselves to Paul or Apollos, and we are great if we think our leader is great. And so there was this contest between the two sides, the Paul side and the Apollo side, as to who is the greatest and who's the best team. Kind of like football almost, isn't it crazy? And what does Paul says? He, you would expect Paul to say, well, of course, I'm the great guy. I'm the one you should follow. But he doesn't say that. He says, who are Apollos and who are Paul? Each of them is nothing more than God's servants. None of us is the big deal. Who's the big deal? It's God. Yes, I planted the church, said Paul, and Apollos watered the plant, but it's God who made the plant to grow. Neither of us is a big deal. What we are is servants of God, and each of us is trying to do our best to do the work of God. Each of us will be judged by what we do, but it is God who matters in the end. Isn't that fascinating? Instead of Paul wanting to be the big deal, instead, he simply is happy to be a servant of God. It's like an experience I had one time many years ago. I went to visit this couple, and the husband was such a braggart. I heard about how he had been the greatest athlete in high school, and if it weren't for him, his football team never would have won any games at all. And at his workplace, Everyone should be indebted to him because he kept the workplace going. His bosses were just idiots compared to him. And he was the one that made the, the difference. And he told about all these projects he was working and all the good he was going to do. And he just had to tolerate the slovenly people who worked with him. You know anybody like that? We all do. There's always people who boast. His wife was completely different. You come to the door. And she would say, how are you doing? How's the family? How are the kids? She would not ask if you wanted something to eat or drink. She would have food prepared and give it to you. And you never heard her talk about herself. Now, she had a lot to talk about if she did. She had an excellent career. She was very professional. Uh, she was very wise, a very kind person, all these characteristics. But you never heard a word about her. She was wondering about how you were doing concerned about other people. And even her husband, who was boasting all the time, she didn't seem to be troubled by it all. She kind of ignored it. And she would every now and then say a nice word about him, but it wasn't about her at all. Why? Why wasn't it about her at all? Because she was someone who believed that God loved and forgave her, that God cared about her. So every day, she started out the day feeling like she was somebody who mattered. It was like Paul, remember? He remembered how Jesus had forgiven him for fighting against the church, arresting and imprisoning people. And instead, he gave him this job to do about being an apostle and going from town to town and starting churches and helping people find faith. Paul believed he had really something to do that mattered, and it made such a difference in his life. So how do you deal with people like that who are arrogant? How do, you, how do you deal with that fact? Well, Paul was telling the Corinthians, 
they had a choice of what game they played in life, what they occupied themselves with. Were they concerned about being the greatest and the most important and being able to brag? Or were they concerned about taking God's love and sharing it with others? Isn't that interesting? Remember when you were a child, there were some things you loved to do. You loved to play with dolls maybe, or you loved to march out your army of toy soldiers. Remember those days? Uh, sometimes as parents, we love to buy toys for our children so we can get down on our knees and play with the kids and remember those good times. But there comes a certain point, usually when you're a teenager, where you wouldn't be caught dead playing with dolls or playing with toy soldiers. Your friends would harass you if you did, but you're beyond it, right? It's, it's, it's a foolish game. You're not into that anymore. And, and sometimes as we get older, there's some things we thought that were the most important in the world and we realize they weren't as big a deal as we thought. And it makes such a difference when we let go of an old game that isn't working anymore. Well, that's the way it is with people who are trying to be the big deal. It's a game. Maybe you played it when you were six or seven, you had to be the big deal. But when you get to be an adult, especially a spiritual adult, we don't need to do that anymore. But how do you deal with people who are so arrogant and just put everybody else down? I found something that really works and it sounds like it's absolutely crazy thinking. If someone is bragging, they're bragging because they don't feel good about themselves. Why would anyone who was really competent, really an outstanding person brag unless they felt insecure? So what you do is you compliment them. You were the greatest football player in, in high school history. Wow, that must have been so much fun that you were that person who could do all those things. You keep your company going. I bet so many people appreciate that. Well, one time I did that to a friend who was bragging about being a minister. He did everything well. And I said, you must be so proud that you're leading your church in such a way as that. And after I did that for a while, all of a sudden he started saying, yeah, but it isn't as easy as it looks. And the consistory doesn't always like me. And sometimes I have trouble with this or that. And I was just shocked. He was just insecure. And so by being someone who can let go of your own need to be affirmed and helping other people to affirm them, their insecurity often goes away. Of course, sometimes you can call people on it like Paul did. He didn't have the ability to be in Corinth, hanging out with the Corinthians and, and building them up and then kind of guiding them in the right direction. He, he had done that in the past, but he wasn't there now. So we just called him on it. He said, you're playing the wrong game. Don't play that game anymore. We are Christians. We don't have to do that. So in our life, there are always going to be people who are really difficult to deal with. Sometimes it's probably been us, right? <laughs> so have mercy on others. Remember the love you have that God has given you. We don't need to act in such a way. Be happy of God's love and lift others up. And Mindy is back to do the second part of the prayer list. Jean and Ross Ilio Sr., Brantley Black, Violet Bortner, Karen Gibbs, Joan Grosskost, Julian Grody, Tony Heiss, Paige Creole and family, Mary Lou and Donald Meckley, Lori Miller, Shirley Miller, Gary Rohrball, Shirley Russell, Lisa Seymour, Violet Smith, Sherry Trump, Jay Bondron, Thanksgiving for the healing of Patricia Moore, Gail Am Ambrosius, Kenny Bear, Cindy Breeden, Joanne Harner, Dwayne Henry, Tina Horst, Dorothy Trump, Darlene Worley, 
Karen Anstein, Fred Baber, Beth Brenneman, Angela Cox, Regine Crone, Kathy Dubbs, Jim Ursham, Brady Eister, Steve Forbes, Linda Glass, Leanne Hill, Chip Hoover, Mary Kelly, Richard Lucumball, Paul McWee, Kaylee Noble, Jerry Sherman, Gail Taylor, Barb Trone, Beverly Trump, Bill W. and family, those we keep in our continued prayers, Robert Anstein, Kevin Crum, William Dell, Dennis Falsey, Todd Gladfelder, Lester Heckler, Cindy Helmers, Joan Hensel, Dr. Mark Hirsch, Dolores Jones, Warren Lockman, Ray Leapart, Dustin Miller, Lisa Myers, Bob Odstadt, Pat Palmer, Kathy Vorball, Mike Schmidt, Sharon Schuler, Laura Schilt, Beverly Spite Mohammed, Summer Storm, Virginia Souter, Sherry, Shari and Kenyon Taylor, Kim Wilson, Richard Brett Wilkerson, and Julia Woodby.
A benediction. Let us go inspired by these words from the Apostle Peter. Come to the Lord, the living stone. Rejected by people as worthless, but chosen by God as valuable. Come as living stones and let yourselves be used in the building, the spiritual temple, where you will serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. You may be seated for the announcements. First of all, I would like to thank all those who helped make our worship service possible. Thank you, Mindy Sterner, for being our worship leader. Jonas Sterner for being our song leader, organist, pianist, and Brenda Stillmanshu for playing the clarinet and bringing such beautiful harmonies and tones to that service, to the, that music. And on the tech desk, we thank, let's see, Brenda Henselshu, we have two Brenda shoes. Do you notice that? Brenda Hansel shoe. Um, yes, uh, it'll have me in a second. Uh, Gerald shoe. Uh, thank you. Uh, Adam shoe, Ray Thacker, and I think Ben shoe was, Ben Marsh was up there somewhere working away. So thank you. Oh, and, and Adam, Adam Marsh. Did I say Adam shoe? Yeah, that's another shoe. There's a whole bunch of shoes around here, but that's not the right one. Adam Marsh. Thank you. Also, flowers this week 
were given to the glory of God and in memory of Levi and Pauline Snyder by their daughter, Mary Ann Miller and family. We're looking for flower sponsors for Thanksgiving Eve service. You can contact Karen Anstein or Mindy Sterner if you're interested in sponsoring the flowers for Thanksgiving Eve. That is Wednesday, May the 23rd. And birthdays for this coming week, and I'm not gonna say your age so you can relax. Uh, Jane M. Nace, Barbara S. Dice, David Woodring, Rebecca R. Rohrbaugh, Tanya Shu, Velma Stambaugh, and Viola Smith. In upcoming events, next Sunday, as I mentioned, is the crop walk at one o'clock, that's after church. And uh, you've heard the people who are walking uh, and just give money to Mike. He'll, he'll funnel it to the people who need it, Mike Sterner. And uh, if you wanna do that, they're walking so much a mile for uh, those people who are hungry in the area. All Saints Sunday is the 10th, is the 30th of uh, October. And at least that's where we're celebrating at our church. And it's an opportunity to light candles in memory and of honor of those who have passed away. We remember that that light means they're still alive in God's sight. And uh, you have an announcement. Come on up, Karen. Karen has an announcement. You, you come up and I'm gonna do some other announcements while you're getting here, okay? Okay. Veterans Recognition is Sunday, the 6th of November. And not only are we going to have a time at the beginning of the service where Jonas is playing the, the anthems of those various branches of the armed services, but we're having a dinner later on. And we know you're going to find that very helpful. Come on right up, Karen. And they're gonna turn the microphone on there for you. Homewood is um, collecting items for the shut-ins and you can, uh, the, the three things are boxes of Kleenexes, like the little boxes, uh, unscented lotion, like hand lotion, and then Christmas cards. And if you would like to give any of those items, I'm going to have them like a box back there in the bottom at the steps where we come in. And um, I got to have it by December 9th to take them up to Homewood then. So if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. So uh, boxes of Kleenex? Yeah, it's like this little yeah, little square ones. ones. And then uh, unscented lotion yes. and Christmas cards. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much for thinking of that. Yeah. Appreciate it. This is how we get to know things. Uh, also, uh, on the 13th of November, uh, the Rankin boys, Tristan and Emerson, are going to be here to tell us stories about Coats of Friendship. They're the group that distributes coats to homeless people. And so if you have a gently used coat and or you want to buy a new one or want to give a gift of money for this very worthwhile project, you're helping people who are homeless, they'll be here on the 13th of November. And um, anyway, our postlude is called the Jupiter, is that Corral? Very good. And it's by Gustav Holtz and Jonas and Brenda are going to play. Thank you.